I should like to thank the organization for accepting my communication. Thank you, Jesus. This speech wants to be a contribution to the study of Euripidean ekphrasis as device for knowledge dissemination. The idea starts from the subject of my doctoral thesis, now in progress. Some scholars have studied uh, the evolution and conceptual change of ekphrasis from the sense this term was used in antiquities and nowadays. From a sideline says that ekphrasis is a slippery topic, and I agree. Why? Because we must take into account some elements that involve this term. For example, the subject of description, the properties of ekphrasis, like uh, energia, fantasia, intermediality of ekphrasis between the visual and the verbal, and the ability of this term for transform the audience into a spectator of the events of the main action. We will focus on this question. Ekphrasis begins in Homeric and Asiok works. However, the theorization of ekphrasis arises especially during the imperial period. Ha ekphrasis has already been defined as a technical rhetorical mechanism by the rhetoric and finally is systematized in the exercise of a school rhetoric, prognosmata, to which we will return later. Theon, Aftonius, and Hermogenes, the rhetoric that revised the rhetorical procedures and treated the concept of ekphrasis, defined this, its characteristic and typology. Theon is the first one, so far as we know, that defines the concept and establishes classification of the elements described, person, fact, place, time, object, events, and mixed ekphrasis. On the other hand, Hermogenes adds the ekphrasis of events or occasion, kairos, and lastly, uh, Aftonius includes the ekphrasis of animals. Later, but later, Nicholas of Mira adds uh, ekphrasis uh, of statues and painting. Uh, and this concept uh, later will be limited the, to the description of work of art, which is the sense used nowadays. The systematization of ekphrasis in the prognosmata and certain reference to them, as Professor Fernández Delgado said yesterday, make us think that Euripides could have served as a literary model in the way that Homer and Hesiod did. This would reflect the importance and permanence of the Euripidean tragedy from the rhetorical point of view. The purpose of this work, this brief work, is to reinforce, on the one hand, the importance of Euripidean ekphrasis as a technical rhetorical resource whose permanence is found even in the school rhetorical exercises. On the other hand, it seeks to highlight the use of ekphrasis as a key element to the knowledge dissemination among the receptors of his own time, the mythological, historical, or cultural information that is transmitted by means of ekphrastic discourse, conforms a way of learning. Finally, ekphrasis for our modern receptors results in approach to the way of the thought and perception in antiquity. To this end, we have chosen three passages from three Euripidean works. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the first one is Electra. We will begin our analysis with an emphasis from Electra. Before the anagnosis between Orestes and Electra, the chorus describes Achilles' weapons. First, the chorus relates the images of the shield, which constitute the most extensive description. Then, the curious and the spear of the hero are detailed. Despite the frequent evocation of Homer, Iliad 18, and even Hesiod, Shell of Heracles, 
the excellence of Euripides resides in the capacity of creating such a busy emphasis with very few details. The description starts with the clarification of what is going to be related. The chorus itself repeats something that it has heard but not seen. However, the emphasis doesn't lack detail. In this description, as well as in all description of objects, the order of elements remains the same, which the prognosmatic theory expressed later. For this reason, the description begins with the figures in the orb, followed by the, own, the ones in the center of the shield. In the orb of the shield, we find Perseus with winded sandals holding the severed head of the Gorgon, and with Hermes being next to him. The pitted's characterizing the hero provide an epic tone that evokes Homer and Hesiod. The chariot of the sun, Pleiades and Iades, appear in the middle of the shield. Adjectives specifying uh, how the chariot of the sun is and what stars appears in the center of the shield, and the adjective chrysos is characteristic element in every Achilles weapon except the spear, that bring visual vividness to the description. Euripides highlights the goal in the arms of Achilles, and this feature is a significant factor in his ori origin originality that distances him from his literary models. In the sides of the cuirass, we find the figure of a lioness breathing okay breathing fire and escaping from Pegasus this allude to the mythic episode about the death of Chimera by Bellerophon and Pegasus Chimera as well as other characters in Euripides and Ephrasis uh, is a have a negative meaning and this is in relation for, mm, with the central action of the tragedy. Also, this is Fraxtis passage, like others on Euripides, contain words with a very strong symbolism that allude to main subjects, as in the case of Chimera or Gorgon, that in this passage are prefiguration of Clitemnestra. The second passage is Phoenician woman, the description is expressed by the messenger who tells Jocasta the mortal fight that is going to take place between her two sons. This passage is very interesting for two reasons. One hand, the ekphrasis of the shield of the Argi warrior has evidence reminiscence of Aeschylus, the seven against Thebes. Also, Euripides does not follow the style of Aeschylus, he equally achieves a very detailed description with fewer descriptive elements. On the other hand, it seems that two types of ekphrases are combining in these lines, a description of pragma, the most common, detailing a uh, description of pragma, uh, detailing a world event with a catalog of the warrior, Within this one, we find another ekphrasis in this occasion of the object, specifying what type of weapon each warrior carries and what emblems each one has. As we can see, there are seven warriors described with their respective weapons. The first one is Parthenopeus, Amphiaraus, Hippomedon, uh, Tideus, the fifth warrior is Polynices, the son of Jocasta, described as enraged. He carries the Ponian mares as the emblem of the shield, whose description is especially vivid. From a subjective viewpoint, the messenger interprets the image relating the sound that the mare seems to transmit running. Capaneus, and lastly, there is Adrastus, whose, she, whose shell is not forget but painted with the hundred serpents of the Hydra. 
From the literal point of view, this double ekphrasis pragma object has a metatextual meta sense. In painting, this would be called meta painting. That is a picture represented with, within another. Each emblem of the shield tells a story in itself that influences the central action. In what degree? The image of the shields are elements that the messenger himself interprets and uses to compose two prolapses. The purpose of this ekphrastic passage is clear to arouse in the audience the desire and furor of the warrior that tried to beside the city of death. From the rhetorical point of view, it is possible to move the audience by bringing it near the interpretation of the reality of the person making the description, in this case, the messenger. In addition to this, the character of each warrior is outlined through the description of the weapons, and the lineage is detailed through the description of the emblems. Eon. The first description of object is conducted by the chorus composed of servant of Creusa who contemplate the temple of Delphi as if it had never been there before. For this reason, we continuously observe the admiration of the chorus when they describe the seven Im images with well-known mythical scenes. For example, Zeus uh, with golden clothes or Heracles killing the Hydra of Lerna. This ekphrasis has a dialogic form. The chorus asks and responds for each image it sees inside the temple, where visual vividness is once more present using imperative, adjective, affirmative sentences, or questions. Euripides has been able to create a familiar image, Temple of Delphi, with which the audience identifies its cultural reality and transported to that place and made a participant in what the chorus is watching. This passage has a very specific moral meaning since by describing several battles between monsters and gods, it highlights the division between the divine will and superiority. The public, through these mythological stories, realizes the difference between gods and mortals. This, in turn, interacts with the central action of the tragedy, especially in the life of the protagonist, Ion. To conclude, this, uh, sorry, hmm. to conclude, mm, the analysis of these ekphrastic passages has served to verify the usefulness of ekphrasis as a source of knowledge for the audience at the time. We are aware that this study should be expanded, but in this first uh, approach, we can determine that the Euripidean ekphrasis present the main characteristics that are related later uh, collected in the pre Nasmata, putting the object before the eyes of the audience. At the same time, the ekphrasis has probably mm, served to give information to the public about an object it did not know, such as the shell of Achilles, the images in the temple of Delphi, or the shields of the warrior in the Theban wall. We also observed in these Euripidean passages how the use of ekphrasis responds to rhetorical mm, purpose. The description of Euripides mm, shows some variations in the story, which is replete with the symbolic words. The audience is aware of being attending a new representation of the mm, mythical story related to the critique of value uh, that Euripides intend to combine. Finally, we believe that ekphrasis in the Euripidean tragedy has achieved its rhetorical purpose, and in addition, this resource has managed to transmit mythological, historical, and cultural knowledge by way of an object or an event, as we have seen before. And this is true not only for the audience of 
this time, but also for us, uh, modern receptors that fail to fully perceive the cultural references that the Bolivian expresses conceal. Thank you. <laughs>